Hello my beautiful and lovely gamers, my name is Jonal, today we are breaking down how I dominate with a Zenyatta here in the lower elo, this is Diamond of course, this is the Diamond Smurf that I talked about in a couple of previous VODs, and essentially um, what we're gonna do with this account is that you guys can request on the comment section what you guys want to see me play, so this I can use this account for that, Diamond Master-ish rank probably, this is gonna be comfortable sitting on this, I'm gonna flex a lot on it, and essentially this is me to break down how you guys can dominate on this hero, this is not gonna be working just in Diamond, it's gonna work in uh, lower elos than Diamond, and of course also higher elos than Diamond. So, let's really talk about how I dominate with Zenyatta, or how I try to kind of make a system. Now, logically, I'm not a perfect Zenyatta, I don't really play much Zenyatta, and this is kind of me just picking him up and working with what I have of skill sets already. So, let's focus, especially mechanically, I know I'm struggling, I'll probably a billion comments about me missing my shots, but let's still talk about them. So, what we're looking at today is essentially the two following. We're looking a little bit at how I position myself. The positioning of Zenyatta has this very big push and pull mechanic that we want to utilize. Remember that Zenyatta's hitbox is like this, right? It's like this huge, that's a really ugly triangle, but it's like this gigantic fucking triangle with a head on top, right? That's essentially a Zenyatta, right? And the, the balls run. And and that is the problem with Zenyatta, that because of your big ass hitbox and the fact that you're so easily killed, your nobility and so on, you need to position yourself in a very safe manner. Also the fact that trance is such a valuable ability that if, for example if you get earth shattered and you have trance then you're essentially are destroying because you could have saved the team with your trance in that earth shatter, right? So what I do is I use the, the same style of pull and push and pull mechanic meaning if let's say I am here, my team frontline is here, the enemy team is here, right? If my team pushes the enemy team and they kind of give some space or whatever and I feel safe, I'll push up. I'm not going to stay in the front line, but I'm going to kind of keep the relative position, right, to my team. And help them be aggressive as long as I feel that I have a safe front line in front of me. As soon as I don't feel that, for example, if the enemy team starts pushing me um, or my team, or my team starts retreating, or in any way, I will do the same. And I make sure that I'll at least I try to make sure, not we can't always have it, but I'll try to make sure that I have enough space to kite with, right? Enough space to retreat and enough space in between me and the enemy team to give me the option to fall back. Now, not always we can do that. On some but certain times, we need to play very aggressively close to the objective. Sometimes we need to do that. Sometimes we need to defend on the closer quarters and so on, which doesn't allow us enough kiting space as we, for example, need to play on a very tight high ground, right? At that point, it's limited to how much kiting potential we can have and so on before we get put out of kind of commission, but we always try to get the maximum value out of it, and it's very important. Also, just small stuff to how we position ourselves close to cover, as we do with all these types of heroes, right? Being close to cover instead of standing in the middle of the street. Now, two is, of course, how you push the crosshair. We pre-fire corners, we pre-aim corners, meaning I want my crosshair on the corner before I peek it, right? I don't want to put, have my crosshair over here and then need to do like an insane flick over here, right? I just want my crosshair just to be resting there and then if there's enemy, I'll immediately get to hit them, right? Stuff like that will help you guys take easier shots, which even with bad mechanics or bad aim will allow you. will see my very first kill that I get here onto their DPS will be the first kill, I believe, in the match. And will be because I pre-aim and I won't even use my mouse. I will just pre-aim and strafe. And that will do that my orbs hit because it's a very easy way to land your hits. Now, let me just go quickly through kind of how I run it. I always run through left side because, again, I want one, I want value. And if you look at how you go through main, right, we like to clear kind of corners, right? So ideally, we want to clear one corner after another. If I go out here, I can be shot from there. I can be shot from someone crouching there, which I do a lot on as a Genji player, right? We can get shot through here, right, and so on. And there can even be someone up there if they're really cheeky, right? And I don't like that. I don't like that, that kind of exposure for me as a Zenyatta. So because of that, I peek here instead. And if I get also a surprise shot here early right as they kind of retreat from spamming i can get some first hits in hopefully a kill most likely not most likely just some old charge to my transcendence right next up will of course be as i clear here we'll, we'll try to be to clear here right so i'll pre-aim this corner right to see if there's a weathermaker or a sniper right to get them away after that of course it's pre-aiming here right again we do the same thing now, I will be playing far back here in the beginning, and I will most likely always try to do that. I have cover from this wall, there's far distance away, I cannot get hooked, to increase our drop off, uh, damage drop off, I have control over this high ground. Um, potentially, if you want to play more aggressively, you can play up here, I don't like that as a, as a well, 
It depends, really. Again, I don't feel like the range that I gain from being up here is that big compared to here. But if I have a strong front line and I know we're going to play aggressively, you of course, I of course need to play here because as my team push, I would like to get to work here. As my team push and take a lot of the aggro off me, I want to push up there. Right? But for example, when I know that the team comes, that you will see my team running, which is ideal, and also know how these players behave, as it's not the first round, it's like the third round that we play on the map. I know how they play. I know we have some people that feed and take a lot of aggro, and I know that they that I that therefore I will have to play further back, keep myself safe. I have full control over this situation. I can control. I have walls to cover, and I hate when people say stuff like here. Right? Imagine standing here. You can get hooked from all these different places. They can easily peek you. If they peek you, it takes ages for you to get to cover, and they can go from here. They can go from there. You're super easy to assassinate. You're super easy to kill, and you don't create security. If your Anna is here, and you are here, for example. And Ascendic wants to like jump over the wall and do some plat shit, right? And an attacker, right? You can shoot him and you can pressure him, you can kill him and make him go away. If a widow maker picks him, you can pressure that widow and make him go away, right? Get behind cover, right? And so on. You can't do that if you're also up here with Diana, right? So you're also securing your own backline. But with no further ado, let's run the VOD. We'll try to speed through it as fast as possible as I want to show you guys defense as well. Go here, as I said, pre aim here. I'll shoot too late. I can't clear the window because I need to help my Hammond, right? And notice how the target prioritization is always going to be. So I, they, I know what they are running right now. I know they run they run a Kree, they run a Send, they run a Widow, a Mercy, a Hog, and a Hammond. Okay? So my priorities are always like this. You look for the best squishy kills. Meaning for here, it's actually the Send, the Kree, right? The Widow, right? Because Kree has easy hitbox, Send has easy hitbox, Widow has easy hitbox, and Widow also stands still. Right, so those are kind of my three, especially in diamond, they stand a lot still, they health scope a lot. So, those are kind of my three kind of picks that I'm looking for. Outside of that, if I can't get any of those, I'm constantly kind of looking for looking for them to stand still, looking where they're defending, looking where they're holding, looking where they're spamming. Right, if I can't get any of them, I, I, I try to default over to the hog, the hammond, right, the hog and the hammond, which later will be the hog and the diva, right. That's kind of my default. The Hammond isn't that big of a result. The Hug is kind of because I want him to burn his breather and get kind of pressured off. And um, the Hammond isn't as big of a priority as he can normally doesn't die. But the Diva is a very big priority as I can get her D-Mac. Now let's build this watch. Okay, so I'll shoot here. And that's the first pick. And again, notice how it's done. I'll highlight this once. Okay, I pre-aim. I shoot. I see the Kree. And I die. And notice that I didn't move my crosshair. I just strafed. Right? Because I don't need to because I already put it where it's supposed to be. Right, we shoot here, pre aim the corner again, start spamming, spamming, spam. My team pushes up, so I advance with them. The hog is there. I'm trying to use this wall as kind of my go to cover wall. Right, I'm a little bit scared that he's pushing. My team is advancing, so I'm like, okay, my team is advancing, so I'm just helping my hog to win the 1v1. Look, this is how we cycle this again. We want to be active, so I use the discord to, to speed to speed. To spy through the wall, right? I see the Discord moves back, meaning he just took a lot of damage from my hog. He's probably moving back to get healed. So I have an opening here to do something else. So I'll charge a quick right click, look for a pick. I'll try to get the Kree. I'll miss horribly. I immediately pre am here, expecting the hog to peek me. I'll charge a full volley, understand that he's not peeking in time. So I go to Bane. I try to shoot someone. I don't see anyone, so I'll just fire it. Didn't see anyone. Okay. Heal my hog and immediately snap back to where their hog is coming. Right? Again, keeping pressure on their tank and making sure that he can't peek or do anything while I still try to get openings onto their supports, right? Looking for picks. Bam bam bam. Same here, right? Notice that I'm calling far away from their 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 hog, even though the tie fight is won, because I don't want to feed, I want to build trans. Right? So again, by default, without thinking about it, I don't run straight from main, I keep my distance. Pre aim in the silly fire here, blah blah blah. We run through we run through. I start spamming up here because there might be a widow peeking there, so I'm pre-firing that corner. I'm gonna take this, my doom face is not gonna feed. So what do I do when he feeds? He is gonna feed great. Okay, what do I do now? I take this high ground, punish the diva, and again, notice that I don't need to be on this low ground. Why? Because my tanks are down here, right? They can push us now, and if I'm down there, there's a big chance I'll get picked from either there or from one of these windows. Right now, I have overview of both windows. I can zone a widow that peeks out of this. If a diva peeks out of one of those, right? I can zone those. I'm protecting my line, so if this hog decides to push, I'm standing far back, just playing turret. He can't kill me. He can't get a pick. So even if he try, if he tries to rush my team, he's gonna slowly but surely die to me, right? Full overview. I'm safe, and I have 
just the information like I'm looking for. I'm controlling this part of the choke. If they are playing on kind of the middle to the left part of here, I can shoot them. I can snipe them, right? If there's a Widowmaker that want to snipe here or whatever, it's pretty easy for me to pre until they fire her. All right, so blah, blah, blah. I'm marking. I'm just pushing. We're just looking for kills, right? Again, right now we're looking to punish tanks and just spamming the tanks to make them go away. But again, we're looking for squishy targets. I'm spying after a Widowmaker or a Senor Kree. Just gathering information. Where are you guys positioning yourself? Where are you guys going to play from? Because if I know where you guys are going to play from, I can start preemptively firing my corners again with my right clicks and potentially get a kill as I'm a semi-sniper. But again, because I don't, I'm not hit scan and I need charge time. I have only a split second when I peek the corner a lot of time to get that one kill. So I need to know where they are supposed to be. So I have the highest chance of actually finding them and getting my volley directly to them. Right, so I'm just spamming down here looking for someone, right? Creating space, making sure their tanks doesn't do anything funny. I'm very really lucky that my that their team is pretty bad and doesn't um and doesn't play uh play high ground. Right, so they play low ground. Okay, my Hammond is gonna engage here, and because he pushes up and I know that their team is all on the point, I follow. Right? Because even though he's feeding right now, this is stupid, right? He shouldn't really be doing this. But even though he does, even if he dies. It takes them so long time to get to me that I can normally just retreat backwards, right? So I'm going to be advancing here. I see a Kree. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to kill him and continue to spam. Pressure this Widow. Try to get her off. Miss all my shots like a, like the pog I am, right? Trying to get her. Again, fuck up my right click. This is kind of where my send mechanics kind of falls down. I see my Doom Fist engaging her so I know it's safe to peek. Peek here. Try to get the Kree. He combat rolls away. Start again. Pre-aiming a corner, right? Remember now... The only one I'm dueling right now, even though their entire team is alive and our Doomfist just fed once more, the only one that's actually that I'm actually dueling right now is the Widow. No, it's the Diva, and that's the only one I need to care about. So I'm just pressuring her, trying to get her away, making their healers uh, focus on her. Right? Remember, even though even if I'm not killing their tanks, I'm forcing their supports to heal them, which is everything from them going out of position to um, their supports. Uh, you know, just only burning resources on them so the rest of my team or I can get picks. But this hog survives because my hog doesn't have a full loaded before he fucking hooks. Now, notice again how I've been spotting. I spotted this Widowmaker. Again, we're looking for the Widow. So I spotted this Widowmaker, right? Now the McCree is kind of marked and I kind of shoot. Oh, I saw the Widowmaker right there. So I charge another right click to get her. The Diva peaks. I make her go away because I don't want her up there. Right? To helping my team. Charge another right click. That's the Widow. I try to shoot. And she dies. Right? Again, constantly looking for the Widow. That's the pick. I try to shoot. Spam, 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 spam. My team is engaging. My team is feeding because <laughs> my Hammond is super, super low. Right? As he tries to stop the res. And therefore, I trance. Now, you might question why do I why do I trance quite easily. Because one, they don't have any ultimates I'm really holding it for. Right? Notice that they... Whole hog will push my May. Bomb will one shot through it. High noon one shot through it. Widowmaker ult is just her headshotting my team through my trance. Right? Valk is Valk and the tra their trance is their trance. Right? So there's no ultimates I'm holding it for. And this is kind of our full engaged team fight. I need this to win. If I don't trance here and we lose this one, we're still going to be stuck in this choke. So this kind of like, okay, we got the pick, we got all the rest. My tanks are ready to go on the point. We have our team in engaging. Let's just go full on then. Right? We get the trance off there, trance super, super late. I start marking, I start spamming through this here, right? I'm start, I'm spamming over here, the, I'm trying to go for the mercy, I'm, my, I fuck up every single mechanical shot ever, and don't get her because of it. And this is kind of where everything hits, the, where kind of shit hits the fan for me at least. They high noon, I hear the high noon, I try to be pog, and I try to right click through to kill him, and it doesn't work out. I, what I should have done is I should just have stayed behind my wall, and kill the... Uh, the hog, but because I was scared that my team was going to lose if I didn't kill the creep because he could most likely just hide him. Notice that my doom I've been feeding this entire time. Now we're actually going to win that team fight because of the engage that we did and because they are kind of at a disadvantage with the spawns. So we're going to win that team fight and go over to defense. So defense is going to be very much the same. Try to get off some spam in the beginning. Okay, didn't really work. The Genji pops the flag here, so I and I hear that on the audio queue. So, again, I mark him, and I try to preemptively fire that corner to see if I can kill him. I don't. Unlucky. Kite backward. And notice how, again, I use the same when I was when I was defending. And when I was attacking. I'll actually see if I can get into the lobby again. The same when I was attacking. Um, second point, right? I was standing in the staircase, and I was spamming this very, very, very thin kind of line. Now, those lines are, of course, spammed back by the enemy team. Uh, I'll actually go tracer just because it's faster, right? 
I'll just go tracer because this is just really a small thing, but it's kind of important thing, right? The same that as I said, yeah, I was just standing here, kind of just spamming here from up top here. Why? Right? Where I could shoot here, I could shoot here. I could kind of shoot a little bit into the point, right? This kind of little little doorway allows me to control who is peeking me and who I am peeking, right? Instead of me standing again, if I stand here, right, I can be shot from every single angle, right? And I do the exact same thing on defense. I'm gonna use this little sliver here to shoot through, right? Now, you can't always do that. Sometimes you need to move back here and start shooting from over here, right? Trying to shoot a little bit through the choke. Because, again, if you are shooting constantly through here, and especially if you're not strafing, if you're just standing still, I strafe in and out all the time, they will, of course, start spamming back at the exact same angle, right? But it's really good because it, it's low risk. I know exactly who I'm peeking, and it's very low risk for me. I'm not really peeking much more, and I'm still controlling this top right hand group, uh, high ground, right? And then I'm rotating afterwards. So you'll notice that. I'll be using this a lot. And again, notice my positioning. One, I'm much safer now because I have a Ryan, I have a Saria, I have a Mei, right? So if they try to push through, they'll push through my tank line. And I have plenty of time that they need to run through my tank line and take a lot of damage to fall further back. That's why I'm not holding further back. But I'm still holding in a position where I'm denying this here. I can help in the team fight, And I have cover through here. It's very easy for me to just go a little bit to the left and I'll immediately be covered from the door right so it's super easy for me to kind of i have plenty of cover i have plenty of time and also have plenty of space to rotate i can play up close here i can fall further back to the objective right i can even play a little bit in main if i want to behind the rock and i can play left inside this house and shoot through so if there's a team fight that breaks out very close here i can actually shoot through the house and be relatively safe from whatever happens in the door choke so continue to spam here i get a mock and i therefore see the genji climb that wall i help my widow with him and I continue to kind of spam, right? Push a little bit up here and then healing my Ryan and continuing to spam. Trying to see if I can mark certain stuff and see if I can get anything out of it. The tracer goes around, I can't shoot her, so I just ignore her. It's not really much a problem. I note that she's now there and of course I'm gonna watch out that she doesn't, with how uh, she's gonna potentially attack me behind. But still though, I have some time to potentially weaken their team um, and so on. And therefore I'm gonna continue to spam and that's the send. Notice how bad this positioning is for him. Notice what he's doing. This is very, very common, common shit to see in Diamond, right? Notice where he is. That's the Senyara. He jumps in front, just in front of main, with no cover, no shield, nothing to protect him. And even if he had shield, he don't know if it, it's gonna get removed or whatever, right? So because of that, I easily get in, in a bunch of right clicks on him. And he's just going to stay in main. I'm just going to continue to spam at him. I see his HP bar. His HP bar specifically because of the blue. Right? Which is going to allow me to get that pick on him. Which is... Oh, okay. I actually have really far forward. Sorry. Let's see. Bam, bam, bam. Go back here. Shoot there. Right? That's the sand. He's in, in the open. No tanks. No shields. No front line. Really bad positioning. Right? They're going to res him, burn the res on him instead. My Widowmega is going to get died by the Battle Mercy. I disco the Battle Mercy. I heal my own, so it's very difficult. And I try to see if I can help my team sniper. I get dived now by Tracer at the same time. How do they deal with that? I rotate, I mark her, and I start shooting and doing this crazy... I know how, how they're going to try to play me, right? They're going to try to blink here, blink here, blink here, blink here. So I'm just shooting and trying to rotate as fast as possible to get her onto her, right? She blinks, I land a headshot. Before people say, oh my god, you stomped the diamond player as in your GM, this guy is smurfing and he's at least like 3.8k, right? So this guy is smurfing. So yeah, we start shooting, ba ba bam, discording and spamming the corner. Again and again, right? Trying to just keep this spam going. My Widowmaker died once more, I marked the Genji, I heal my Widowmaker to make sure that he doesn't die. Right, and I continue to pocket. My team is pushing up, so I'm kind of following after. I know the team is dead. So I'll just allow myself another right click to see if I can get anyone. So jump here. Doesn't get anything. And start moving backwards. Give up to Masaria. And it's the same thing, right? So it's the same concept over and over again. I use these corners to constantly spam, to constantly kind of kind of get angles. And I play according to my team. If the enemy team is far back and I have time to fall back, I'll play maybe a little bit further forward. If my team is, is, is falling back or if I'm scared that the enemy team is going to try to push, I will myself start falling back. Now, you might be questioning why I don't try and steer, and it's logically because there's only one hog through, and I do believe my team will survive, which they do, right? Even though it's a close call, they do still survive. So I don't need to burn my try and Now, now you'll actually soon see when I actually get pressured. So this Widowmaker will actually start hitting me soon, right? That's one shot to watch me. I will try to do something that's a little bit 
GK, if I crouch here, my crosser will actually be able to shoot right under there and hit his feet. Now, I don't crouch because, again, my mechanics, and I fuck it up, and I shoot the roof, and I get a body shot. But it's only a body shot. I get healed. It's fine. I continue to spam this angle. Um, the Widowmaker is going to start to take a shot at me again. And I'm going to now understand that my position has been compromised. So instead of taking the same position a third time and let her headshot, I'm rotating. In through house. Play here. They trance. I, I heal. I check the HP bar of my team before I pop an ultimate. So they these guys have plenty of, of, of HP right now. I don't need to trance. What I'm going to do, however, now, and this is kind of audio, I hear a dragon blade coming behind me. So I charge my right click to try to get it off into the sand and then I immediately trance myself. As I know, he won't be able to reach me in time. Trancing around a little bit here and notice my end positioning. I know that there is a team fight going on here, right? I know there's a team fight going on here. I know there's two people here. So I know that the only place that's safe for me is way over here. Right? This will also put me, because I do believe that there's a meter Widowmaker through main, so I do know that as well, right? which allows me to know how I want to rotate. I want to rotate out of here. I'll rotate up here, mark, their, mark this guy, rotate, see the Widow, and again, because I'm playing so close and in such a steep angle, it's difficult for them to hit me. I, bu I, I bully him away, mark him, so I have peak advantage. I knew where he's standing, so I pre the corner, get him, we have picks. I tried to get the Mercy. I'm not getting her. She's out of the combat. I don't need to chase her because I'm not stupid, right? I know there's still people on the point fighting. So I try to finish her off. I miss my shots and I go straight back to my team, right? Being active, right? Checking that my team is fine. As soon as I see that, I go back to my Ryan. He's doing Ryan stuff and I'll try to help him. The Hammond, the same goes here. He kind of flew around me. So right now, as he goes through here, there's no way I'll hit that. So I just mock him. And start spamming through main, seeing that he see that he is going up here and gonna go for the objective. So now there's a chance I can actually hit him. So I'll I'll start shooting him, giving healing to my to my Moira. He runs away. There's no way that I'll actually get him. And notice again, this is kind of my my big mistake here. We shoot here, right? And I shoot him, and I give my orb. Notice how I move out of my safety here. I'm, I'm right now. I'm getting protected by the wall, so I'm line of sighting the widowmaker from main. I can just one v one this Hammond, right? He's the only one that can see me. I'm the only one that I can, and I can see him. No one else from the enemy team can actually spot me. But because I'm stupid, I'll move closer, and it doesn't give me any benefit to move closer to this, right? Same with what I talked about by standing like in main, right? If you stand in, and if it's like a corner like this, and you stand here. That normally doesn't give you any benefit from, be, compared to standing here, right? If the enemy team is coming from here, right? This only makes you super exposed. This gives you a corner to play with and also, you know, a run around so you can run away, right? So the same goes here. I don't gain anything from moving this closer, but because of it, I get killed. Because this guy just gets to line up a shot on me and kill me. So I hope that this helps uh, a little bit. Again, tell me what heroes you guys want to see in the future. Did you guys spot this mistake in the end here before I, I actually died or anything like that? And again, um, feedback on this series is always welcome. So as always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe with bell notification, all that stuff. And if you want to hire me as your private coach, it's 50 euros for a two-hour session. Doesn't matter if you're bronze stuff for 100. As long as you can get a bot, I can help you rank up, improve and get better at the game. So hit me up on our Discord server and We'll talk about that. So, as always, guys, I love you guys very, very much. Be so positive, awesome, and as always, guys, keep the enemy in your crosshair. Uh -huh.